127 kamikaze drones, 38 locked onto one destroyer, 90 seconds until first impact. USS Arleigh Burke stands alone in the Persian Gulf, facing the largest coordinated drone swarm in naval warfare history. 300 crew members, 96 vertical launch cells, and one Aegis combat system that's about to face its ultimate test. This is October 7, 2025. This is the moment drone warfare collides with American naval power. And this is the story of 90 seconds that changed everything. The morning started routine. Persian Gulf Patrol. 40 miles off Iranian coastline. USS Arleigh Burke cutting through calm waters at 18 knots. 505 feet of guided missile destroyer. 9,200 tons of steel and weapons. The ship carries firepower designed to fight Cold War battles, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, enemy aircraft. But what's coming isn't Cold War technology. It's something newer, cheaper, and potentially deadlier. At 0823 hours, SPY-1D radar detects multiple contacts, not just multiple, massive. The radar operator sees his screen light up like Christmas tree. 127 individual targets, all airborne, all heading toward American positions. Speed 115 knots, altitude varying between 50 and 300 feet, flying in coordinated patterns. These aren't birds, these aren't false returns. These are Shahed-136 kamikaze drones, Iranian copies of the design that terrorized Ukrainian cities. Each one carries 80 pounds of high explosive. Each one costs Iran maybe $20,000, and Iran just launched 127 of them simultaneously. Combat Information Center erupts into controlled chaos. Captain reaches his chair in eight seconds. Weapons officer already calling out target data. 127 drones identified. Primary targets appear to be three American installations on Arabian Peninsula and four naval vessels in the Gulf. USS Arleigh Burke draws 38 inbound threats, more than any other target. The Iranians know this destroyer carries the most capable air defense system afloat. They're testing it, hard. What's your weapon of choice in this scenario? Type A for missiles. Type B for close-in weapons. Drop your tactical call below. Time to first impact. 90 seconds. The numbers are brutal and simple. 38 drones incoming. Each one could cripple or sink the ship if it connects. The R. Lee Burke class can take damage. It's designed for combat, but 38 simultaneous hits. Nothing survives that. The crew has 90 seconds to achieve perfect defense. Not good defense. Perfect because letting even three or four drones through means catastrophic damage. Aegis Combat System takes control. This is what the system was built for. Multiple threat engagement. The SPY-1D phased array radar can track over a hundred targets simultaneously. It feeds data to the Aegis computer at incredible speed. Target priorities get calculated in microseconds. Threat assessment, intercept solutions, launch sequences, the system makes decisions faster than any human can process. It has to. At 90 seconds and closing, there's no time for committee decisions. First response, electronic warfare. The destroyer's ANSLQ-32 system activates. Powerful jamming floods the radio spectrum. The goal is disrupt drone navigation and control. Shade 136 drones use GPS and inertial guidance. Jam the GPS and they lose precision. Some drones wobble off course. Maybe eight of the 38 show navigation errors. They're still coming, but trajectories degrade. Small victory. 30 drones still locked on target. Time to impact, 75 seconds. The Aegis system selects RIM-162 ESSM missiles, evolved Sea Sparrow missile. These are the workhorses of ship defense. Mach 4 speed, active radar guidance. Each VLS cell can hold four ESSM missiles quad-packed, the Arleigh Burke carries 32 cells dedicated to ESSM. That's 128 missiles ready to fire, more than enough to engage 30 drones. If every missile hits, in combat, nothing guarantees every missile hits. Launch sequence initiates. VLS cells begin ripple firing. Missile hatches blow open. White flame and smoke erupt from deck. The first ESSM clears the cell and rocket motor ignites, then second, then third. The firing rhythm is mechanical, precise. 
one missile every 1.2 seconds. The destroyer launches 40 ESSM missiles in 48 seconds. Each missile receives mid-course guidance from SPY-1D radar. Target coordinates updated constantly. The missiles streak outward at Mach 4. Closing rate between missile and drone exceeds Mach 4.5. First intercepts occur at 35 miles. ESSM missiles go active. Their onboard radars acquire targets. High explosive fragmentation warheads detonate within lethal radius. Drones shred into tumbling debris. The radar picture shows targets disappearing. 1, 3, 7, 12. The intercept rate looks good, but not perfect. Two ESSM missiles chase same target and both hit. Wasted shot. Another missile loses track when its target drops to 40 feet altitude. Skims the wave tops where radar performance degrades. The drone survives. If you're getting value from this tactical breakdown, hit that subscribe button. This level of detail takes serious research. Time to impact. 45 seconds. 18 drones destroyed. 12 still inbound. Too close for more ESSM launches. The engagement range shifted inside missile envelope. Now the battle moves to guns. The destroyer carries two Phalanx CIWS systems. Close-in weapon system. 20 mm Gatling guns. 4,500 rounds per minute rate of fire. Autonomous targeting. These are last-ditch defense. The goalkeeper. When missiles fail, Phalanx has to succeed. Both Phalanx systems lock onto targets. The distinctive radar dishes track inbound drones. Fire control computers calculate intercept points. When drone enters kill zone, the guns open fire. The sound is unforgettable, like industrial zipper ripping through metal. Spent brass casings pour onto deck. 75 rounds per second from each gun. Tungsten penetrator rounds streak toward targets at 3,500 feet per second. First drone enters kill zone at 100,200 yards. Phalanx unleashes 150 round burst. Tracers draw line through sky directly into drone. The Shahed 136 disintegrates. Warhead detonates prematurely 800 yards from ship. Fireball blooms orange against blue sky. Debris rains into ocean, one down, 11 remaining. The guns traverse and fire continuously. Target, burst, target, burst. Mechanical rhythm of survival. Second drone shredded at 900 yards third at 700 yards. But Phalanx has limitations. Effective range may be 1,500 yards maximum. Against targets doing 115 knots, that's less than 30 seconds engagement time, and 12 targets converging from multiple vectors. The math gets ugly fast. Time to impact, 30 seconds. Nine drones penetrated the Phalanx envelope. Still inbound, different approach angles, some high at 200 feet, some wave skimming at 40 feet. The guns engage the closest threats first, natural target priority, but that means drones farther out get free passage until they become closest threat. It's triage. Save what you can, accept what you can. What would you have done differently at this point? Full power evasive turns? All guns to one sector? Comment your tactical decision below. The destroyer's 5-inch main gun enters the fight. MK-45 naval gun, not designed for anti-aircraft work primarily but crew loads VT-fused proximity rounds, shells that detonate near target based on radar fuse. Range to targets drops under 2,000 yards. Gun crew fires eight rounds in 40 seconds. Manual aiming using optical backup when radar can't isolate individual targets in the swarm. Three shells detonate close enough to damage drones. Two Shahed 136s lose control and crash into sea. One keeps flying, but engine damage drops speed by 30 knots. That one becomes easy phalanx target 10 seconds later. Time to impact. 15 seconds. Six drones remain. Phalanx systems firing non-stop. Barrels glowing red from sustained fire. The thermal limits approach. Four more drones shredded in final defensive zone. But two drones survive the gauntlet. They're inside 400 yards now. Too close for phalanx effective engagement against small crossing targets. The crew can see them. Wingspan eight feet, Delta wing configuration, Iranian markings visible, these drones are going to impact. Crew braces for impact. Damage control teams positioned throughout ship. Some sailors pray, some grip stations tighter. Everyone knows what happens when 80 pounds of explosive detonates against ship hull. 
but these last two drones carry malfunction from earlier electronic warfare. GPS disruption degraded their terminal guidance. Instead of striking critical areas like bridge or VLS cells, they hit forward at waterline. First impact at 0831 hours, 47 seconds after Phalanx opened fire. The explosion tears 12-foot hole in hull three feet above waterline. Blast shreds frame and tears through adjacent compartments. Seawater floods in immediately. Second impact follows three seconds later, eight feet aft of first hole. Similar damage pattern. Two breaches, both forward of main bulkhead. Flooding isolated to bow section. Damage control teams respond instantly. Hatches sealed, pumps activated, flooding contained to three compartments. Casualty count, 11 wounded from blast effects and fragmentation, none fatal. Ship remains combat capable, speed reduced to 12 knots due to forward damage and flooding, but floating, fighting, functional. This kind of comprehensive tactical analysis takes hours of research. Support the channel by giving this video a thumbs up. Final assessment rolls in from Aegis system. 127 drones launched. 38 targeted USS Arleigh Burke, electronic warfare degraded eight. ESSM missiles destroyed 18. Phalanx guns killed 16. Five inch gun damaged three. Two impacted ship. 36 of 38 neutralized. 94.7% kill rate against 38 simultaneous targets in 90 seconds. Those are numbers no naval force in history could achieve before Aegis. But perspective matters. Two drones got through, two impacts. If those drones had struck bridge or VLS cells, outcome changes drastically. If all 38 drones had maintained perfect guidance, the defender needed 100% kill rate. That's statistically improbable. Ship survives today because electronic warfare reduced the swarm size and because two drones malfunctioned at final moment. Luck played role alongside technology. Other vessels in Persian Gulf faced similar attacks. Smaller patrol craft with less capable defense systems suffered worse. One coastal patrol boat took seven drone impacts, sank in four minutes, 23 crew killed. Another destroyer with older point defense systems neutralized 22 of 28 inbound drones. Six impacts, ship survived but combat ineffective, required tow to port. USS Arleigh Burke performed best of any target. The Aegis system proved its value, but it also proved drone swarms present legitimate threat even to most advanced warships. Iranian strategy becomes clear in aftermath. Overwhelmed defenses with numbers. Shade 136 drones cost maybe $20,000 each. 127 drones represent $2.5 million investment. USS Arleigh Burke carries $9.2 billion price tag. The ESSM missiles used in defense cost 1.8 million each. 40 missiles fired equals $72 million in ammunition expenditure. Iran traded 2.5 million to force America to expend 72 million. Plus they damaged a multi-billion dollar warship and killed American sailors. From cost exchange perspective, Iran achieved strategic victory even though tactical execution failed. Technology lessons emerge quickly. Electronic warfare proved more valuable than expected. Eight drones neutralized without firing single shot. That's 20% of inbound swarm degraded for zero ammunition cost. Future warships need more powerful jamming systems, wider spectrum coverage, better GPS denial capabilities. The more drones you can confuse electronically, the fewer you need to destroy kinetically. Missile inventory becomes critical consideration Arleigh Burke carried 128 ESSM ready to fire, engaged 38 targets, used 40 missiles. That's adequate depth for this engagement. But what if Iran launched 200 drones? 300. The math stops working. At some point, you run out of missiles before enemy runs out of drones. Especially when drones cost 1 90th what defensive missiles cost. The magazine depth problem has no easy solution. Ships can only carry so many missiles. Replenishment at sea takes hours. You can't reload VLS cells while under attack. Don't miss future breakdowns like this. Make sure you're subscribed so you catch every analysis. Close-in weapon systems need upgrades. Phalanx performed well, but firing 20 mm tungsten against small drones is inefficient. Each drone may be required 100 to 150 rounds to ensure kill. That's 15 seconds of firing per target. 
Against 12 targets converging simultaneously, the math barely works. Directed energy weapons present future solution. High-power lasers that kill drones for pennies per shot. Unlimited magazine depth as long as ship generates power. Multiple targets engage simultaneously. The technology exists. Integration onto warships becomes priority. Drone swarm tactics will evolve. This attack used basic approach. All drones on similar vectors at similar altitudes. Future swarms will coordinate better. Some high, some low, some fast, some slow. Converge from multiple bearings simultaneously. Saturate specific defense sectors. The choreography of drone warfare is just beginning. As attackers learn, defenders must adapt faster. Training implications cascade through naval community. Every Aegis cruiser and destroyer crew studies this engagement. Simulator time increases. Electronic warfare officers get additional qualification standards. Damage control teams drill breach scenarios repeatedly. The engagement becomes doctrine. Textbook example of modern naval air defense. Both what worked and what barely worked. Strategic calculations shift. American naval presence in Persian Gulf now operates under different threat calculus. Drone swarms aren't theoretical anymore. They're operational reality. Ship deployments adjust. More destroyers with Aegis. Fewer smaller vessels with inadequate defense. Patrol patterns change. Ships maintain greater distance from Iranian coast. Carrier strike groups enhance screening formations. The presence mission continues, but methodology adapts. Iranian military learns opposite lessons. Drone swarm concept validated. Didn't achieve sinking. Didn't achieve catastrophic damage, but proved American warships are vulnerable. Proved defense systems can be saturated. Proved cost exchange ratio favors attacker. Expect Iranian drone production to increase. Expect larger swarms in future conflict. Expect more sophisticated coordination. This engagement was proof of concept, not final form. Your engagement shapes our next analysis. If this tactical examination provided value, share it with anyone interested in modern naval warfare. 90 seconds, 38 targets, 36 destroyed, two impacts, 11 wounded, one ship damaged but fighting. Those numbers tell story of technological triumph and strategic warning. The Aegis system works, but it's not invincible. Drone warfare presents challenges that Cold War systems weren't designed to counter. The answer isn't abandoning current systems, it's evolving them, adding layers, electronic warfare, directed energy, better coordination, deeper magazines. Future naval combat will look like this, swarms versus shields, cheap versus expensive, many versus few. The side that adapts fastest wins. The side that learns deepest survives. USS Arleigh Burke survived October 7th because its crew trained hard, its systems performed well, and luck broke their direction. Future engagements might not include that luck component, which means technology and training must compensate. So here's the question that matters for every naval power. Can traditional warships survive the drone age? Or does cheap autonomous technology fundamentally shift the naval balance? Is a $9 billion destroyer vulnerable to $2 million of drones? How do you defend against threats that cost 1 power 90th of your defensive ammunition? Drop your analysis below. If you made it through this entire tactical breakdown, you're exactly who this community serves. Hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this with anyone studying modern warfare, because 90 seconds in the Persian Gulf taught lessons that will shape naval doctrine for decades. Your support through likes, comments, and subscriptions makes analysis like this possible. The drone swarm era arrived October 7, 2025. USS Arleigh Burke faced it, survived it, and proved that American naval power can adapt to new threats. But survival isn't dominance, it's warning. The next swarm will be bigger, more coordinated, more lethal. The question isn't whether ships can survive one swarm, it's whether they can survive the next 10. Stay tactical, stay informed, and we'll see you in the next Operation Breakdown.